Um, you know, we went through, we stopped somewhere around verse 9 last week, made it, got into 9. Um, uh, but uh, right here it says, you know, we asked the leaders who gave you permission to rebuild this temple and restore this structure. Um, you know, they're probably, it's probably a mayor or, you know, somebody like that, somebody with authority around, unlike, you know, over here in verse 4, you know, when it's the enemies. Um, you know, these guys right here don't seem like, you know, the Bible doesn't say they're like enemies. Um, they're probably just guys like, hey, who's giving you permission to build this? Like Build Inspector we talked about last week, who's giving you permission to build this? And, and, and it had been so long that these guys did not know that, there was a decree you know that's how long it had been these guys did not know that there was one and you know they were probably just saying hey covering their butts you know so they wouldn't get in trouble with the king if this wasn't supposed to be going on it's probably what they were doing um but uh you know in in today um you know who gave you permission you know i started thinking it's like uh you know today you know who gave you permission to uh you know to in serving God, you know, who gave you permission when you uh, uh, catch a, a touchdown and you go and you kneel and you pray, you know, who gave you permission to do that? Who gave you permission to t uh, judge Roy Moore? Who gave you permission to put the Ten Commandments back up on on the courthouse? And said, God did, you know. I mean, that's that's what we're getting. God gave us permission, you know. Who gave you permission to? And it's getting down to where uh, eventually it's it's and it's already getting there, you know. Sharing the gospel is hate speech. That's how they've twisted the First Amendment. So you can't say anything hateful if it offends me. That's hate speech. And, uh, you know, Jeff gave me this shirt, and it says, you know, I love Jesus and Jesus loves you or something like that. You know, I remember I was walking out on the beach uh, down in, um, when we were down at Myrtle Beach last year, and I was just waiting for an SJW or Snowflake to roll up to me and go, yeah, yeah hate speech, take it off. You know, but yeah, it didn't happen. People were like, yeah, man, cool. I was like, praise God. You know, I was all encouraging. But uh, eventually that will change. Um, and, and there was uh, in 2017, uh, Gordon uh, Lamore, uh, he's 42. He was a street pe preacher over in the U.K. Um, he got arrested for telling a, a gay person who's 19 years old about Adam and Eve. You know, and it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. No offense. Um, but he, <laughs> but he got arrested literally and spent the night in jail and then the sheriff released him. But I mean, that's what, that's, it's coming. Um, and, uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, that day will, that day is soon approaching, uh, baking the cake, you know, who told you, you can't bake me that cake. You know, apparently the Supreme Court might or may not, you know, in June. You know, that decision's, you know, they're working on that decision and it's supposed to come down in June whether you got to bake a cake. And, you know, so, you know, that guy it went out of business. You know, I think he's oh, I looked it up and he's selling like recreational vehicles or something. But he said it was a profitable business. Up to that point, he even lived, you know, he, he knew he was kind of in a, in a gay community area. And he says, man, you know, we would talk and have uh, meaningful conversations. I don't hate anybody, but, you know, I'm just not that ceremonious, you know, marriage between a man and a woman, and I'm not going down that road. And uh, and we saw now we're at the Supreme Court. Um, but uh, anyway, so basically he had to shut his business down because of it. And then we're going to find out, you know, in June what the deal is because, I, I mean, that's simple. I mean, so there was a cake, and it may have had a man and a man on it and said, you know, I love you. But, you know, as an artist, and somebody comes and tells you to do something, now, as perverse as society is, what do they say? Hey, this is what I want on my cake. You're like, whoa, no, 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 no. I'm not. I ain't no way. I'm not doing that. You know, and, and not it may not even be for a gay marriage. They may want you to just do something perverse on a cake. And you're like, no, I'm not doing it. And then bang we go so let's just be praying that uh you know either the supreme court adds a new newer member or uh you know they can come to their senses and you know and acknowledge what it is marriage is between a well i guess they've already yeah they've already gone down that road so it's now is whether you know you've got a, a first amendment right to say no i don't want to do that 
Um, to the death. And we demanded their names uh, so that we could tell you who the leaders were. And if we go over here to uh, Luke 20, um, you know, Jesus. I'm going backwards. Uh, the authority of Jesus challenge. You know, one day as Jesus was teaching uh, people and preaching the good news in the temple, the leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders came up to him and they demanded, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you the right? And then Jesus said, you know, hey, let me ask you a question first, he replied. Did John's authority to baptize uh, come from heaven or was it merely human? They talked it over amongst themselves. If we say it was from heaven, he will ask why he didn't believe John, why we didn't believe John. But if we say it was merely human, the people will stone us because they are con, uh, convinced John was a prophet. So they finally replied they did not know. Uh, and Jesus responded, then I won't tell you by what authority I do these things because he was the authority. Now, Steve, you're correct. All right, so this NLT version has Jesus and he as in little h. I just picked up on that. And I was like, nah, that's wrong, <laughs> oh, man. I'm done with this thing. Surely enough, it says he in little h. Is... Oh, really? They want to be politically correct. Um, all right. Uh, this was their answer. We are the servants of God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built here many years ago, speaking of King Solomon's temple, by a great king of Israel. All right, so you know, I did some, uh, I probably don't have to look it up, but the King Solomon temple, they say today, was worth $54 billion with a B. Fifty-four billion dollars, um, but because of our ancestors' anger, the God of Heaven, He abandoned them to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who destroyed the temple and exiled the people to Babylonia. Now I look at it kind of in modern day terms. You know, have our ancestors angered God? I would say the answer would be yes. You know, we've taken. Bibles out of the school, prayer out of the school. Uh, now we have abortion on demand, you know, um, taking the Ten Commandments down everywhere. So I would say yeah, our, our ancestors have angered God uh, today. Uh, Americans, our ancestors, boom, my, maybe not specifically my, I don't know. I hadn't gone back to see the voting record of my ancestors, but um yeah, I pray not, but still, we're all in this in this together. So, um, you know, the deal is, what do we do about it? You know, and it's our jobs, you know, as the church to you know help like these guys right here. You know, they're going back and and they're they've repented and they're going back and uh, they're they're rebuilding uh, the temple. You know, and you know today our temple is the church temple is us, and we're supposed to go out and. And, uh, and restore people, um, just like they're restoring the temple. Um, and I just, that was the Lord, because I don't think about that. <laughs> but yeah, we're supposed to go out and restore people. Like, you know, we were all restored at one point in time. And, and re as we restore more people, then America will be restored, right? Um, and we turn and repent, and if we can get the right people, if enough of us, uh, do the right thing and vote for the right people, boom, and it may be coming soon. You know, if if, if President Trump gets a couple more uh, Supreme Court nominees, it'll it'll be coming. You know, I'm, I guarantee it will. Prayerfully, that'll that'll be overturned. Um, uh, 
However, King Cyrus of Babylon, during the first year of his reign, issued a decree that the temple should be rebuilt. So I started looking this up, and I was like, oh, that's the Lord. Um, all right, so this is one of the greatest biblical prophets was Isaiah, which we've talked about um, here, when who predicted... Uh, that the Persian monarch Cyrus the Great would rebuild Jerusalem in Isaiah 44, 24 through 28. This was particularly impressive prophecy because God called Cyrus by name more than a century before uh, the king was to be ever born. So um, Cyrus, in a, a general in the army of the Medes, must have felt bad for the Jews no longer having a temple. Solomon had constructed the original temple over a period of seven years, and by all, all accounts, it was a wonder. Uh, then the Babylonians invaded and burned it to the ground. Uh, Cyrus gave orders to rebuild uh, the temple, and he returned all the temple valuables, which we see uh, right here um, that in a minute, that had been looted by the Babylonians. Of course, we see it uh, in one nine as well. Um, the, se the second temple last second temple lasted till uh, seventy A.D. Uh, when it was raised uh, to the, when it was um, burned to the ground uh, by the Roman soldiers under Titus. Today, many Orthodox Jews long uh, to reestablish the temple and its ancient systems, including the sacrifices. Some even hope the story of Cyrus will be repeated by a modern ruler. Uh, the Jews took great encouragement when Donald Trump won the 2016 presidential election in the United States because they remembered his promise to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. They also note that Russian leader Vladimir Putin has expressed his desire for the temple to be restored. Uh, we are poised to rebuild the temple, said Rabbi Hael Weiss, spokesman of a group called the Nascent Sanhedrin. Uh, the political conditions today in which the two most important national leaders in the world support the Jewish right uh, to Jerusalem as their spiritual inheritance, inheritance is historically unprecedented, un unprecedented. And like right here, all right, they had to get permission to rebuild the temple, and the same thing is going to be happening when the third temple, they just can't. It would be great if they could just go ahead and rebuild it, but they can't. They're going to have to have permission by somebody to rebuild the temple. Um. The hope that Orthodox Jews have placed in the leaders of the world, the two most powerful Christian nations, may or may not be well placed, uh, but they've been quietly advancing their goal of rebuilding the temple for decades. Uh, they've even bred the flawless red heifer uh, that were specified for the temple sacrifices, in Numbers uh, 19, 1 through 8. They've also uh, sought out uh, descendants of the tribe of Levi uh, who would be qualified to conduct temple services. But the requirements for the ritual purity are pretty stringent for such uh, recruits. Uh, potential priest, and I'll be done right here in just a second. This is just neat. Potential priest proximity with the dead, uh, so they must never have been in the hospital or have entered a cemetery at any time in their lives ever, and they aren't even allowed to be in the hospital at the occasion of their own birth. So that's the requirement that they've set up for themselves. Um, but and then I'm in this here, but uh, perhaps the most uh, expensive preparation uh, for the new temple, because we're fixing to talk about the temple stuff, uh, for the new temple has been the recreation of the seven branch candlestick, the menorah. A, gold, a goldsmith used one talent of 24 carat to make the massive uh, candelabra uh, to the same biblical specifications as the one made for Solomon's temple, which cost about 150 grand. So it's made. Um, but yeah, so oh, did you see the menorah? Ah, oh, cool, man. All right, so I'm gonna read this. All right, so the push to rebuild Jerusalem Temple has earth-shaking implications. So, and, and this text right here is mentioned in this article. I was like, I was looking it up. And I was like, no way, there it is. All right, uh, the future. 
Third Temple, as it might appear, uh, there is not a more disrupted parcel of real estate than the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. A portion of the land uh, there is occupied by an Islamic mosque, yet they are developing plans to rebuild the prophesied Jew third Jewish temple. Um, that leaves the government, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in a political situation that offers no easy way out. One American pastor's, pastor now is telling Christians they need to pay careful attention to what happens next. So during uh, Jewish Passover, a Jewish activist, now listen to this, during, uh, let's see, this is uh, 2017, last year. So let's see what comes up this year. Okay, so during Passover, Jewish activists held a ritual sacrifice in view of the Temple Mount as part of a larger effort to encourage the rebuilding of the Temple. Attending the ceremony was Yadu Glick, an American-born Knesset member of Netanyahu's Likud party. Uh, the ceremony was held outside the Hura Va Synagogue in what was rightly perceived as a prestigious location that gave the ritual a certain amount of legitimacy. One of the activists involved predicted it would be just a few more years before the sacrifices were held on the Temple Mount itself. But even attempts by Jewish activists to begin hosting sacrifices on or even near the Temple Mount has led to increased tensions with Muslim countries. And the Muslim authorities who govern the Temple Mount have forbidden any sacrifices on the Temple Mount itself. Israel police uh, recently arrested five Jewish men who were attempting to pray on the Temple Mount. So they were trying to go up there and pray. As well as 17 people in a separate incident who were trying to smuggle goats onto the site to offer a sacrifice. So they're trying to do it now. Um, Netanyahu cannot afford to antagonize uh, religious Jews or Orthodox parties. Uh, as they form an important part of his political coalition. coalition. He's already having a hard time keeping his coalition together as the leaders of the ultra-Orthodox Israel political parties have uh, publicly announced their opposition to any unilateral attempt by the prime minister to dissolve the government. At the same time, the nascent Sanhedrin, a group attempting to revive the ancient Jewish legal institution, is also attempting to promote a rebuilding effort. Just a little bit more. Bear with me there. In response to a conflict between Netanyahu, this is cool. Here's what we're talking about today. In response to conflict between Netanyahu and in Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zavarif, the group invited Iran to rebuild relations with the Jewish state by endorsing a rebuilding of the temple. So he's like, hey, you want, you want to restore our relations with y'all? You know, hey, why don't you endorse rebuilding of the temple? So Netanyahu points out that Iranian leaders have vowed to wipe out the Jews. In response, Zarif reminded the Israel leader it was Cyrus the Great, the founder of the Achaemenid, Achaemenid Empire, who had helped build the Second Temple. Um, the biggest problem uh, for Israel in building the temple is not needing Iran to somehow give permission or assistance, but for the nation of Israel itself to make it happen. Um, it's Israel's political politics that stands in the way. Um, and then right down here at the bottom, we'll go. Uh, others say the situation now is similar to when the prophet uh, Haggai uh, complained about how some were content without a temple uh, he argued they needed to get to work and rebuild the temple that had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. If you believe God wants the temple rebuilt, why would you stand idly by and not doing all you can do to bring God's presence back, especially if we really want true peace on earth? So, and I thought that was, I thought that was interesting. Get my notes here. So, however, King Cyrus of Babylon, during the first year of his reign, issued a decree that the temple of God should be rebuilt. Uh, King Cyrus returned the gold and silver cups, um, which we see over here in uh, Ezra 1, 9, and it just lists them. You know, it says, uh, um, 
This is a list of the items that were returned. Gold basins, 30. Silver basins, 1,000. Silver incense burners, 29. Gold bowls, 30. Silver bowls, 410. And other items, 1,000. And all there were 5,400 articles of gold and silver. Uh, Sheshabar. <laughs> I could pronounce it early. Sheshabazar. There we go. Brought all these along when the exiles went from Babylon to Jerusalem. Um, and uh, I found somebody did a, just a study on, on some of these articles. Uh, I guess some of them um, were from the original tabernacle. I don't know how many, uh, but it's like the materials assembled for the tabernacle are described uh, in Exodus 35, 38 and summarized in Exodus 38, 21. The total quantity of gold back then was uh, one ton of silver. Uh, one ton of silver, three and three quarter tons of bronze, two and a half tons. Um, at today's uh, gold prices, um, that was six thousand dollars a pound. Uh, Moses, the the articles of the tabernacle would today be worth over thirteen million dollars. It had at this time this article was written. Uh, gold was five hundred dollars an ounce, so that means it would probably be on a thirty million or something like that. Um, but I uh, thought that was interesting. Um, so these cups were taken from the temple and presented to a man named Sheshabar, <laughs> uh, whom King Cyrus appointed uh, as governor of Judah. Now I was researching that. Who is this uh, Sheshabar? Shesha Bazaar, Shesha Bazaar, um, and you know it was probably a court name uh, that they gave to him uh, when he was in Babylon, just like uh, Belteshazzar um, with with Daniel and uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Um, and s there's two th theories there: um, one that it's Shetiel, and the other one uh, that it's Arubabel. Um Is not mentioned uh, in here uh, with the descendants. Um, and obviously we know that, uh, you know, we, as we see um, that, you know, he's also, uh, you know, a leader. Um, so that, that was one of the, the things I found interesting. They, they really didn't know uh, which one, but that's probably was the name of Zerubbabel or Shetio, um in Babylon. The king instructed him to return the cups to their place in Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple of God there on its original site. So the Sheshabar came and laid the foundations of the temple of God in Jerusalem. The people had not been working on it ever since, though it's not completed yet. Therefore, if it pleases the king, we request that a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to discover whether King Cyrus ever issued a decree to rebuild God's temple in Jerusalem, which... You know, we know that he did. Um, and then let the king send us his decision uh, in this matter. And the king did send his decision.